In my uh, recent sunscreen video, I talked about male feminization from oxybenzone, which is commonly found in American sunscreens. I also want to add that there's other chemicals that act like estrogen in our bodies that also feminize males. And sometimes they even androgize females. They make females more masculine. But it seems like feminization is a more common issue, or at least it's more studied. But let's look at BPA. Let's start with the history of BPA. Um, it starts with a guy named Charles Edward Dodds, and he was researching in the 1930s. And by the way, BPA was first created in 1891. But Charles Dodds, mid-30s, he was researching BPA as a birth control. And then he discovered diethylstilbestrol, DES, um, and then they started using that, and that became FDA approved. Doctors are prescribing it for like 30 years. By the way, deaths was a disaster. It was prescribed to millions of people. And in the 70s, they finally banned it, but it caused miscarriages, it caused infertility, it caused, caused multi-generational issues. Um, but going back to BPA, even in like 2014, we've known about a bunch of health issues from BPA. I mean. We're talking about issues with sperm and male organs. And ironically, when scientists discovered some of these problems, they were saying, well, let's try some of these analogs, even though they maybe are toxic, um, and maybe take antioxidants. Like, take some supplements. That'll be fine. Here's the problem, right? These things store up in your body. They accumulate in your body, so they continue to cause problems, number one. Number two, they're acting like estrogen. So these hormonal impacts are gonna have a long-term <laughs> problem. The best thing to do is avoid them. But nevertheless, let's look at a 2016 study where they were looking at BPA analogs. That means bisphenol analog. So you can add letters to the bisphenol. So bis bisphenol A, bisphenol B, bisphenol C, commonly used as bisphenol F, BPF, BPS, BPAF. You can add multiple letters. So you can literally do just a whole host of these things to manipulate these chemicals, and they're still plastic chemicals. And guess what? Um, when you actually analyze these things, number one, they're frequently detected, so they're already being used in 2016 all around the environment. And they have similar or greater health issues <laughs> Um, to BPA, exhibit endocrine disrupting effects, cytotoxicity, it means you're killing cells, genotoxicity, it means you're wrecking the DNA, reproductive toxicity, dioxin-like effects. In 2016, we already knew these were triggering dioxin-like effects. That's like Agent Orange, basically. Agent Orange is, di is a dioxin. And even neurotoxicity. I mean, let's be real. This is damaging, nasty stuff, these chemicals. And they're estrogenic and anti-androgenic. Anti-androgenic meaning they lower testosterone, so therefore you would expect to see feminization. But before we talk about feminization, I want to show you a newer study in 2020 where now the health issues from BPA are actually even more defined and the list is even longer unfortunately it's associated with very health various health problems bpa including obesity diabetes now they added obesity diabetes chronic respiratory diseases that's the last thing we need right now covid cardiovascular diseases renal diseases behavioral disorders i mean so many things, breast cancer, of course, tooth development somehow, reproductive disorders, I mean, on and on, right? So a lot of issues here from BPA. But let's go back to the animal studies and talk about feminization. So in chickens, they tested BPF and BPAF and of course BPA, and then what did they find? Sure, it impairs reproductive organ development, um, similar to other xenoestrogens like mm, sunscreen chemicals, maybe. Um, yeah, and then induced feminization. And the evidence in frogs has always been real clear. Even since 2004, we've known that BPA induces 
feminization. And by the way, it's still legal. It's all over the place. Um, and when they're not using BPA, oftentimes they're using BPS or BPF or all these analogs. But yeah, in frogs, when they're exposing them to birth control chemicals or BPA, what do they find? Clear evidence that BPA induces feminization in tadpoles, in Xenopus larvae. These are frogs. And as you can see, I could go on and on with this. I mean, there's a ton of studies. I want to mention one other interesting thing. It's called cryptorchidism. And they show that BPA is also linked to cryptorchidism, where your testes don't descend. So another basically human study, this time it's just an association, but they indicate that higher levels of BPA are, in, are linked to uh, more cryptorchidism. So again, feminization. And finally, I think the mechanism here is via BPA lowering testosterone. It attenuates testosterone production. Um, and I mean, there's other studies with other types of chemicals that show not only does it lower your total testosterone, but it lowers your free testosterone. And not only that, it blocks binding to the testosterone receptor. And I'm not going to get into all kinds of that detail, but I just want you to realize when you start lowering testosterone, that's a form of feminization. That's what BPA does. That's what BPF does. That's what BPS does. It doesn't matter how many shell games you play and manipulate the letters on the ends of these chemicals. These plastics are bad for you. And we can, we'll do an episode on phthalates next because that's really parallel here.